We begin in California, where computer clones are keeping customs officials busy. Here's our report, produced by Gary Probst. They're smuggled into this country aboard jets from the Orient. They're hidden within crates of cargo from Taiwan. They're brought across the border with clandestine methods equal to those used by the most sophisticated drug dealer. People who engage in illegal international intrigue are focusing on high tech. At the U.S. Customs Office in San Francisco, agents unpacked boxes of computer contraband. It's no coincidence that some of these computers resemble an Apple II. They're from Taiwanese companies who are accused of stealing Apple's engineering design. They're illegal because they violate U.S. copyright law. This particular importation, same stylized case, virtually identical to the Apple. Same interior with a power pack, keyboard, and a motherboard with six piratical ROMs. But the copying goes beyond mere appearance. The ROM chips contain internal programs, information specific to the operation of an Apple computer. Some machines resemble an IBM or calculator, but internally they're still in violation of Apple's copyright. The counterfeiters even go as far as to photocopy instruction manuals, replacing the word Apple with the name of their latest piratical product. This is a page out of the Guanhar manual. You can see how they've substituted the word Apple with Golden 2. In this case, Steve Wozniak, the original founder and developer of the Apple computer, is writing an article on the Golden 2. But computers and copied manuals are still smuggled in by the millions. They're believed to be a billion dollar threat to the U.S. economy. The company with the most at stake is Apple. Names like banana, orange, and pineapple are used to hint that these machines are just as good as the model they copy. One of them is known as the Citron. That's French for lemon. And customs agents say that's appropriate. As an example, when you push down a button or one of the keys on the keyboard, to print as an example an A and you let up on it, it you get 10 A's after that and uh, the, you know the ordinary person wouldn't know how to correct that it would have to be repaired but repairs are also a problem these clones carry no warranty many people try to have them fixed at Apple dealerships but Apple won't touch them the company's trying to stop the clones by helping customs Apple employs copyright attorneys to fight in court and before the International Trade Commission Former narcotics agents are hired as private detectives to track down the smugglers. They would make initial contacts, they would make sample purchases, they would then arrange for large buys in the order of anywhere from 300 to 1,000 computers at a time. They would effectively enter into business relationships with these individuals. The job isn't easy. The smugglers have learned to bring the computers in one part at a time through numerous airports and harbors. Assemblers in the U.S. put the copyright violating ROM chips into the cases when everything is past customs. That's why Apple engineers developed a software package for attorneys and detectives to check out the copyrighted code on individual ROMs. It will actually list out the percentage of the Apple programs contained within each read-only memory chip and that's what it's doing. So we have a 99% copy, here's a 98% copy, and it'll just go ROM by ROM. The crackdown on counterfeits is having an effect. Two alleged smugglers are being prosecuted in San Jose Federal Court. The U.S. attorney in San Francisco believes he can at least slow down the counterfeit trade. There is a deterrent advantage which definitely comes from vigorous prosecution and conviction and strong sentence that wouldn't come. Uh, if we just sat back and said, well, let the market be the determinant of uh, success. The authorities in Taiwan also claim to be tracking down computer pirates. The Taiwanese are concerned about their copycat image, and a spokesman for an economic development group says his country is clamping down on illegitimate companies to keep its U.S. markets open. Everybody, uh, in every, uh, everywhere, there's a bad guy and a good guy. I think the uh, illegal... Uh, computer manufacturers are only a handful. Though our government, as well as our people in, in my country, are very determined, uh, stand ready 
to try to remove those bad apple from the basket. But if the Taiwanese are unable to stop the illegal imports, the real apple will crack down harder to protect itself and other high-tech firms. It's like a parasite. They're, they're, or a sucker fish. You know, they're on that company and they're sucking the life blood. Now, for a company like Apple, which has some time to develop, it's become a very serious problem, but it's not a threatening problem. For a company that's just starting out, if they're faced with a counterfeiting problem, it could literally destroy the company. It's just not fair. I don't think that any industry, especially this industry, is going to continue to grow unless companies feel that their innovative ideas are really protected by law and enforced by law against people who would simply um, copy them. As customs officials, computer companies, and the Taiwanese continue to crack down on computer clones, consumers should be wary of any computers coming to this country from Taiwan. Mr. Liu points out the Taiwanese make computer components. They don't manufacture any brand name computers of their own. So if you see such a computer, don't buy it. CBS has been a brand name in television, radio, and records for a long time. Now they're trying to become a success in the software field. Here's a report produced by Tom Tomaszewski and Fred Dignazio.